What's going on everybody? Kenny Dubs here with another Pokemon Master discussion video. If you guys are enjoying these kinds of videos, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to share your support. Now today, uh, it is 4.30 in the morning, so I'm quite tired, just finished streaming. However, data mine information came out a few hours ago, you can see on the on this post here, so roughly three hours ago while I was still live. But I wanted to get this done, so let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see that probably a little bit better. So. You might have seen the trailer that uh, Pokemon Masters dropped because they dropped it while I was doing my free to play Champion Stadium run. But we're getting some new units. First up with Signature Misty and Vaporeon. This Misty looks adorable. Um, I would have preferred the Heart Gold Soul Silver hairstyle on her, but that's me personally. I like the dress aesthetically. I like the blue and the white colors. Next up, we have Signature Suit Erica and Leafeon. So we have two evolutions, which. It's pretty interesting. I didn't think that we would get evolutions one so quickly, and two, I thought they'd be with the Kimono Girls. Although we can get Kimono Girls as BP pairs after this, so it's not the not the worst thing in the world. And we've also seen multiple people with the same sync pair. Uh, I'm sorry, with the same Pokemon. So that's not really really a thing anymore. It's like oh, each person's only getting a specific Pokemon. Then we have Alistair and Gigantamax Gengar. This is going to be pretty cool. Alistair. I think Alistair, I don't know if he was a fan favorite or something, but I know a lot of people have been posting on Reddit. like, yo, Alistair, I want Alistair in the game. Well, we're going to be getting him pretty soon, which makes sense because Halloween is around the corner. So Alistair and a bunch of other holiday units or Halloween themed units are going to be in the mix, as you're going to see in a second. So we got Dark and Star Raptor. This one was really... There's no image of him here. Well, there's no image of him here, but there might be one over on the dev, lever, dev letter when we go look look at that. But uh, yeah, Dark and Star Raptor, that's not a pair I was expecting at all. But hey, Star Raptor's in the game. It's pretty neat. We have Morty and Bayonet, which is quite interesting. Uh, I'm not really too keen on the way Morty looks. He still has a bandana, except part of it is like, kind of draped over his eye now. I'm uh, actually going for more like a some kind of Dracula look, because with the with the cape he has and everything. I'm not entirely sure. But you can still kind of see like his older color scheme and the purple and the red in the back there. Although this this definitely makes me think more Gengar than um than Bayonet. I said we have Caitlyn and Sableye, which is quite interesting. This is actually a Dark Sync pair, not a Ghost Sync pair, which is um something I like. Now these two will probably be limited because they are, you know, fall fall units, so these two will be limited. So if you wish to pull for them. I believe sometime late October you will have um opportunity to do that. Maybe mid-October. I'll have to see uh, if it's in this information. And we get the Alola Champion Stadium, which is pretty cool. I didn't think Alola would be next, to be quite honest with you. Thought maybe since we finally got since we finally got Sydney, we would get Hoenn Champion Stadium next. But we're actually getting Alola. And it's pretty interesting because there's multiple slashes in here. We have Kahili, we have Hala slash Molane, or Moilane, Kukui slash How, Acerola, and Olivia. So we have some NPCs for upcoming events. We have, this one looks cursed. This one right here. Where's the face for this one? Give the, I think this is, is this Breeder? I think this is a Pokemon Breeder. Give the Breeder her face. The veterans and I think it's gentleman and lady, I believe. This one over here reminds me of Incog because he has the, he got a um, I guess some art drawn of him in like in this trainer style. So I see this, and I'm just like, why is Incog in the game? <laughs> and uh, looks like that's it over here for now. There will be summaries a bit later, but they're not, not added right now. You can see when the when the banners are gonna be. I thought I saw them. Pretty sure I saw them. Well, I thought I saw them here. I guess they're not here. Uh, I'll leave a link to this Reddit thread in the description so that maybe by the time this video goes up or like later on in the day, you can come back here and you can get a look at the event summary and the banner summary for yourself. And let's take a look at the letter. All right. So, message from the Pokemon Masters team EX Volume Twenty Five. Greetings, trainers. Really produces the Pokemon Masters EX. Uh, I think actually, hold on. It's. I think that's that's what they say every time. So I'm actually not gonna do that. 
main story start update to coincide with September 29, 2021, release the newest arc of the main story, the villain arc. The UI for the main story menu has been updated. Pretty cool. September 29th, 2019, 2019? Yeah. 2021, the main, new main story arc, the villain arc, will begin. As mentioned in previous messages, this arc focuses on the villainous organization of the Pokemon series. The Kanto chapter, which is the first chapter in this arc, except the release, September 29, 2021, brings you the schemes of Team Rocket and Giovanni, who has appeared in the prelude. By completing the Kanto chapter, including the hard battles, receive enough tickets for two uses of the five-star guaranteed Kanto ticket scouts as a reward. So you should try. That's pretty good. So... Just by like kind of completing like this the chapters, you're gonna give access to free ticket scouts, which is nice. Now the at least last time I looked, the pool was pretty small. It was like Sabrina, Leaf, and Blue. I wouldn't mind having Blue because Blue is the only one of those three. I don't have five out of five. But if more, if they expand upon that and actually add more of the Kanto units to that, actually, are there even that many more Kanto units that aren't limited? Off the top of my head, I can't think of any. I like I said those three, and then I had to think for a second. I was like, well, I don't think there's any more Kanto units that are not limited. <laughs> that are five-star units. Um. Anyway. As for our villain arc plans going forward, we hope to bring you periodic chapters for different villains of the Pokemon series. The next update included a schedule for the end of this year. So, next update for the end of this year, so that's like three months from now. And... I mean, I guess that's okay. Like, it's not... Like, yeah, it seems like a long time, but... I mean, like, it's story content. So, I feel like they could take a little bit longer with that. It does mean that we'll, we're going to be dry on story content for a while, but I think this uh, this update is, uh, is pretty packed with things. Also, inside these updates, we're going to start another story that's based on a certain character. This story will be different from the chapters that focus on each region. We're planning to release a portion of the story before the update at the end of the year, so I hope you look forward to it. Villain event. Spreading the shadows begins. Alright, as you can already see on screen, you probably saw the trailer. You might have seen me freaking out on, on stream, freaking out on Twitter. Giovanni's going to get access to Mega Mewtwo Y, so let's take a look. And the villain arc that separates the main story updates will be held. Events separate from main story will be held. You can already raise Giovanni and Mewtwo, the 6-star EX, during the ongoing event, but the main reward of future villain events, you'll be able to strengthen sync pairs from legendary events that come that come from the same title as the villain sync pair in the event. In this event, which will be happening at the same time as the Kanto's as the villain's arc Kanto chapter, you can strengthen Giovanni and Mewtwo even more. By collecting Mewtwo crystals from the event, you can have Mewtwo become Mega Mewtwo Y after using Giovanni and Mewtwo's sync move. Sync pairs in the Kanto region will get a strength bonus during this event, so we recommend using Kendo Sync pairs in preparation. That is huge for multiple reasons. One, we're finally getting an event that a lot of people have kind of been clamoring for, in which we we see an older Sync pair that's potential to Mega Evolve, able to Mega Evolve. So that gives that gives hope for pairs like Brock and Tyranitar, Brendan and and Sceptile, so on and so forth. So. That's really, really interesting. However, oh my gosh, hold on. Brainstorm, like like Jimmy Neutron style brain blast. Wait a second. They said we could power up existing sync pairs. What if we could just make Kyurem, Ketsis and Kyurem just, just become Black Kyurem or White Kyurem? What if that's how they're going to implement that? Because in Black and White, he, he took the power of Kyurem or Reshiram from N, or Black 2, White 2. And he's like, yeah, give me that. Now my Kiram is stronger. That would be really interesting, though I don't know how they would implement both of them at the same time. Maybe just have an event when you can go for both, and then once you're in battle or something, I'm not sure. I don't know how that's going to work. However, this is, this is I, I think this is a really interesting concept, and we'll have to see how it plays out outside of Giovanni, because... I, I keep saying this, but I really don't have much reason to pull for any unit that's psychic or dark, or psychic or ghost, because they keep just giving Giovanni stuff. So Giovanni just a free unit. Like, Giovanni is the gift that keeps on giving right now for me. Like, they just keep making it better and better. And as of right now, like I said, there's probably few Pokemon they can release that I'll just be like, I'm going to pull for them for this coverage, unless we start getting more and more 
more and more extreme battles, then maybe I'd be forced to. But as it stands, I'm kind of just like, eh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll make do. Two new Cygnus Suit Sync Pairs debut starting September 29th, 2021. New Kanto Sync Pairs wearing Cygnus Suits will play a part of the Kanto chapter of the main story's villain arc will debut in the Sync Pair Scout. These trainers and new Sync Pairs are Cygnus Suit Misty, Cygnus Suit Erica. More Sync Pairs and Cygnus Suits will appear in the villain arc in the future, so be on the lookout for them. That's really interesting as well, so we'll get to get more Cygnus Suits. And on top of that, at least from what I've gathered so far, these two... Well, I'll, I'll read on a little bit more before I say what I'm thinking. Sync Suit Misty and Mirror Porn are a tech sync pair with some clever capabilities. Their Mist has a field effect that prevents stats from being lowered on the allied field of play, and their Haze move returns the opponent's race stats to normal. So they could be a huge asset in the team when facing opponents that raise or lower stats. They also have a passive skill that charges a move gauge when using status moves like Mist or Haze, making them a sync pair that can battle while having plenty of move gauge to spare. So I'm assuming they're going to be two gauges each, and their passive... Wait charge move gauge by four wait how many move gauges are they gonna take for mist and haze because i was thinking it would just be like a refund of one gauge you know two gauge move refund one but charges it by four that's interesting actually overall like i'm not too keen on misty and vaporeon right now this seems like more of a support pair to be honest like i feel like this could have been better off as a support i need to see the grid and what else it can do but I would have liked this to be a support, but I mean, it's another water type. We're already saturated with water types. And Cygnus Hood Blue is still one of the best supports in the game, let's be honest. So it'd be really hard. I think it'd be really hard for them to sell uh, another water type support that's not on Cygnus Hood Blue's level. Cynicute, Erica, and Leafeon. Cynicute, Erica, and Leafeon are a rest type tech pair that can use Sunny Day. Using Sunny Day will make the Wug of Sunny to trigger their passive skills. One of their passive skills increases the power of their moves, another one accelerates the move gauge, and another one has a chance to reduce sync move countdown after using a move. Their Soak Up the Sun move raises their attack by two stat ranks and their critical hit by one stat rank, but if the Weather is Sunny, it raises the attack by additional two stat ranks and the crit by another stat rank. So plus four attack, plus two crit if it's Sunny. Hmm. And it applies gradual healing to themselves. With this sync pair, you can control the weather to make them more powerful and unleash their Solar Blade attack move on the opponent. Ooh, Solar Blade Leafeon. Okay, so that's just a physical... Solar Blade is a, is a physical Solar Beam, for those of you who are unaware. So plus four attack, plus two crit. Two uses of that maxes out your attack and your crit. You just need maybe speed and possibly whatever else it'll have. Now, it'll be interesting to see if... Leafeon has anything else in its kit, or its grid rather, I guess it's part of its kit, to help with Sun. Maybe we'll get another Sunsetter that, um, aside from Lyra, maybe it'll have Solarize on Sync move or something. Well, I say Lyra specifically because yes, we have Groudon, but Groudon's a master pair and we don't know when that's coming back. Oh, so the thing I was thinking about earlier was that these two... They don't say Pokey Fair Scout, so they're just going to be added to the regular pool. So we're finally getting new sync, Cygnus Suit Sync Pairs in the regular pool. Maybe not a big thing, but hoping that they buff Brock and Titar, since they are a Cygnus Suit Sync Pair that hasn't been relevant since, like, the one battle I had to use it in early on. Fall mini event. On October 6, 2021, a fall themed mini event will begin. In many countries, fall is a season of harvesting. It seems that even on Pasio, there are Pokemon that will work up quite an appetite around this time of year. We hope you look forward to finding out which sync pairs will appear in this event. You can get incredible rewards from this event, such as 5 star Kanto Scout 30 tickets. That's pretty nice, depending on what sync pairs are going to be in the pool, obviously. But as long as you don't have the sync pairs in the pool, you'll, that's really nice. Daily Region Rotation Rewards Update. Starting October 7th, 2021, the completion of the Region Rewards for the Daily Battle will be updated, and you'll be able to get a 5-star five five Scout tickets for each region. There's no difficult. There's no difference in the amount of tickets you can get from each difficulty level. You can get one ticket by completing the Battle Region, and if you collect 30 tickets, you'll be able to use a Scout for that region. And once I have this update, we'll be adding Ticket Scouts for each region to the shop. So, each region will have a Ticket Scout, which is really, really nice, because what this does is this adds a separate curated pool of units so let's say i really want uh you know sydney but i don't want to i don't want to risk pulling for him in the regular pool well 
well, it's not even a it's not really, really all that, that big of a of a risk because this this is free so you get one of these um you get one of these pulls once you get 30 tickets and it'll be from a smaller pool so the odds of you getting sydney will be a bit higher than if i were to pull you know on a random banner and hope that i get sydney outside of a spotlight scout each scout guarantees you one five star sync pair from a one up sync pair from the designated region so try playing the battle multiple times to get sync pairs from each region initially we plan to offer tickets for each region as rewards for fires updates in the future cool New seasonal sync pairs. On October 13th, 2021, new seasonal sync pairs will debut. Have a look at the silhouettes of these Pokemon for these sync pairs. Which channel do you think will team up with these Pokemon? Also seems that the event sync pairs will have a spooky flavor to it. We're planning on bringing back last year's seasonal event as well, so hope you look forward to it. That's pretty cool. We already went over what these are and who they're gonna be with. Uh, Morty's gonna be Ghost, Sableye's gonna be Dark. I'm leaning more towards Sableye if I were to pull for one of them, just because Actually, I don't know enough about either one of them to pull, to, to say I would pull for this one or that one. Though, Sableye being dark makes me want to pull more for it rather than, rather than Bayonet. Because uh, Sableye's dark support, Bayonet is tech, ghost tech. Uxie arrives in Legendary Arena. Uxie will arrive in Legendary Arena on October 21st, 2021. Uxie with the ghost type attacks. In this battle, you have to inflict conditions like burning and poison and status changes like confusion and trap based on the situation. There are new seasonal sync pairs. New seasonal sync pairs are effective in this battle, so if you're having a difficult time de defeating Uxie, try adding one of them to your team. As always, strategy tips will be available in this battle. You'll be able to find them in the notification for this event or from battle attempts at the bottom left corner of the Legendary Arena's difficulty screen. Beginning of a new story event. Starting at the end of October, we'll present a new story event. Let's find a story event in a new way. This event will feature sync pairs wearing special outfits that are different from standard suits or seasonal. Suits. The outfits will be based on special event stories. We'll share more detailed information about that in the next month just before the event starts. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. That's that's quite interesting, actually. So we're gonna get a new event wearing special outfits that are different from Cygnus suits or seasonal outfits, huh? I'm very curious about that. I'm extremely curious about that and seeing how that's gonna play out. Starting at the end of October. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyway. Hopefully, you guys are excited as I am about this, this upcoming month full of things. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with future villains and how they're going to continue to buff older sync pairs. Please, please help Brock and Tyranitar. I, Tyranitar is such a threatening looking Pokemon, but... He just isn't very threatening <laughs> in this game. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below, how you feel about the data mine information and all that stuff. I will be, as per usual, once more information comes out, I'll be going over the sync grids and the kits, uh, giving my thoughts on the sync pairs. Likely later today, but it's almost 5 in the morning now, and I probably should go to sleep at some point. So, anyway... Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel out. And I will see you guys next time. Later.